to hear you don't want to miss a minute of this one. As North Carolina gets ready to take on Georgia Tech, both with two losses in conference, neither can afford another one. Let's bring in the third member of our broadcast crew with a word on a guy who could break a bunch of records here in the next couple of weeks. Here's Mike Hogwood. Hey, Steve, what an atmosphere here for this game today. And, you know, North Carolina succeeds, and they say every team has success if they can overcome certain things. When Brandon Tate, great wide receiver, went down, somebody had to step up, and that somebody has been Hakeem Nix. You talk about records. We yeah, he can set some today, but boy, what a game he had against Boston College. Four touchdowns, caught three passes, ran in for another one. Watch number 88 today. He is going to be a big weapon for the North Carolina Tar Heels. We're about ready for kickoff here. Two top 25 teams, Georgia Tech and North Carolina, the kickoff from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, straight ahead. ACC football is presented in high definition where available by MFS Investment Management. A diverse range of products so advisors can choose what fits. Doc Walker, let's take a look at our Toyota keys to the game. For Georgia Tech, keep the pressure on. Uh, they, they've got to do it, and they're more capable. This is what makes them the team they are defensively. Johnson, Richard, Walker, and Morgan pressuring the quarterback. And, of course, for North Carolina, they have to find time to throw the football. Got to get it done, and Jolly and Reynolds, the two tackles will have an enormous amount of pressure on them. Look for some help from Quinn to tight end and maybe a back slide to chip it. Well, Georgia Tech won the toss and they've deferred. They'll kick it off. And there's Paul Johnson in his first year at Georgia Tech and what a job he's done. But why should you be surprised? He's done a great job everywhere he's gone. Georgia Southern and, of course, Navy, 7-2. And, and Butch Davis, his counterpart on the other side, has lit the fuse here in Chapel Hill. The stands are full. They come here early. They have fun. They have a ritual. They're ready to go. There's Johnny White getting ready to receive. He and Greg Little are deep back. And kicking, it's going to be Scott Blair, who handles everything for Georgia Tech. We've seen more and more schools doing that. These two teams... Have paddled pretty close in the last couple of years. Last three games have finished within a touchdown of each other. Last year, Georgia Tech won on a field goal at the last second. This is Johnny Wright. Almost broke it. Gets out to the 34-yard line. A 27-yard gain for the Tar Heels, and that's where they'll start. On offense, here's the man that Mike Hogwood was talking about. The team next to be the all-time receiving leader in yards today. It's Sean Drone, not drawn, Drone as the running back. Bobby Rome, Brooks Foster, and Richard Quinn make up that group. Up front, Kyle Jolly, the veteran, with Alan Pelt, Lowell Dyer as the center, Calvin Darity, and Garrett Reynolds, who's one of the captains of this team. North Carolina starts first and 10 from their own 33-yard line. Here's Sexton being rushed, and he'll throw it away. He to get out of the pocket. And that's going to be a flag. The rush by Michael Johnson. North Carolina sporting new uniforms. This is the navy blue look. First to World War one since 1960. Well, you got to think quick. And, and no question about it, he tried to avoid the sack. Saxton, nearly 1,000 yards passing in relief of the injured T.J. Yates. But he's from Warrenburg, North Carolina, his junior year. Michael Jackson hurt his ankle. Excuse me, Johnson hurt his ankle on that play. And that's not good for the Yellow Jackets. Put Robert Hall on the field and instead of the defensive end spot. Loss it down, makes it second and 26 for the Tar Heels. They're backed up to their own 17-yard line. Somehow, I don't think Butch Davis envisioned this stuff. Rolling to the left, Sexton finds a man open but overthrows the intended receiver. And that was the key mix on the sidelines. Let's take a look at the, the Georgia Tech defense. Derek Morgan leads the down lineman and is one of the leaders on the team. 45 tackles this season. Walker, Richard, and Johnson, although Hall is playing his spot after that first play. Anthony Barnes at the linebacker spot. Cedric Griffin wants to spend a lot of time in the Tar Heel backfield. Kyle Jackson with them. Morgan Burnett leads the nation in interceptions with six. Mario Butler, Dominique Reese, and Rashad Reed, who's a true freshman. Third and a million for North Carolina from their own 17. Georgia Tech rushes four. Sexton hit as he threw. Pass complete to Foster. And he's down at the 43-yard line. He's close to the first down and may have it. Dominique Reese after the 26-27-yard game. Man, you want to...
to see the explosive pressure. Watch it right there. I mean, that is coming off the ball. You talk about Hall in for Johnson. Explosive bull rush. I mean, this guy came through there like a was shot out of a cannon. That's a lot of pressure. Good job by Pallet. Good throw and catch. The Tar Heels may have just dodged a huge bullet. And here comes the measurement to see how close they are to the first down. Jeff Flanagan's crew putting the marker down, and they are now the size of a Mike Hogwood credit card down there from a first down, and now they got a decision. I thought you were about to say Mike's wallet, which means I would have punted. I would have had to punt. <laughs> he can't get at it with the alligator on. <laughs> it's going to be fourth and one, and the Tar Heels say, oh, what the heck? We can't get six inches here. Don't deserve to be on the field. And it takes a lot of courage. But you know, you have to trust your defense and believe in your guys. The question now, I think with Michael Johnson out of there, it, it might be the spot to go right over Jolly. Rome and Houston are the big backs. Expect North Carolina to take as long as they can in this snap count. Rome in motion. Houston gets the call. Houston gets the first down. And it's brought down at the 47-yard line. It's a gain of five, and it's a North Carolina first down. Dusty call for the Tar Heels, and they're into the field. Yeah, I think it helped Michael jo Again, Josh out. They went right over there, right behind Jolly. That's great blocking, getting right off the ball, forklifting some of the Yellow Jackets. And, it's, and then when your coach believes in you, show some guts. I think guys just, they rise to the occasion. Or they're counterfeit. Well, not the case here. Sean Drone. We've been saying Sean Drone, everybody has, all season long. But Sean went and informed Kevin Best, the North Carolina Sports Information Director for Football, that his name is Sean Drone. Third year in the program, thought he'd let him know. Four-yard game, but we've got a penalty on the play. <laughs> Whatever it is, he can play. I'll tell you that. They're calling Mr. Drone. Well, he's been something the last three weeks of the season here. As he's... You know, it's easy for us to sit up here and say, go for it, go for it, go for it. We don't have to move. We don't move if it fails. But there's something about it, man. I've been in those tunnels before, and you know the coach trusts you, believes in you. you suck it up. After the hold, it's first and 20. North Carolina with Drone slices his way past the first line of defense and gets into the second line. Down to the 40-yard line, it's a gain of three. Kyle Jackson on the tackle. Let's take you to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. Well, you were talking about Sean Drone not pronouncing his name right. Butch Davis didn't know he played running back until this year. He was a defensive back, said Drone asked for an appointment, went to his office and said, Coach, I'd really like to try running back. I did it in high school. He said, I'll give you a shot. Said he loved his vision the first time he saw him, and the rest is his Mike Eve, Mike he even brought some videotapes of his games in high school to convince Butch that he could play there. Pass to the flats is complete. And headed down the sidelines is Sean Drone. And it's going to be a 14-yard gain on a little player. Well, this all starts if you get some help, again, from your friends. If you don't get help from your friends, Renato gives him a nice little shot. You put the ball in the hands of playmakers and allow them to do what comes natural. Gain of about seven brings up third down and three now for the Tar Heels. Great drive for the Heels based on the started on the back with a flag. Nix is spread out to the top side of your screen. Drone is the setback. Foster to the short side of the field. No score, first possession of the game by either side. Drone through the middle, has the first down. Gets into open territory, two players to beat. And he's brought down at the 10-yard line. Morgan Burnett speeds up from the safety position. It's a 43-yard run by Sean Drone. Boy, that is strong. Great block. Cross blocking up front. Dyer, the, the, the center, came off the block. That was perfectly executed. Get a little help from his friends downfield. Watch it. They got Walker to go inside on a slug. Walked him all the way down. Garrett Reynolds with the pile drive. And then this is just good running. And here's Drone on the first down. And just inside the 10-yard line, he weaves his way down to about the 8. It's a 2-yard game. Seventh play of the drive that started at the 33. Went back to the 17. 
all over the place here, but the Tar Heels now are in the red zone, and so are we. North Carolina, 30 possessions, 16 touchdowns, 9 field goals, so they're 25 of 30. That's a look at the O'Reilly Auto Parts red zone. Better parts, better prices every day. Greg Little is split to the short side. The play action to Drone, the pass complete to Pianalto. He stretches for the end zone, touchdown! Zach Pianalto with his first career touchdown in a Tar Heel uniform. Boy, oh, they're happy to get Pianalto back on the field for the Tar Heels. They played fast. I promise you, the coach Shoup has got to be real pleased with his offense. They got hit in the face to start it off, regained their composure, and this really accelerated the rhythm. Sure did. Casey Bach getting ready to kick, but we have an official's timeout, and we're going to have a review of this play. The booth upstairs, which is right next to us, the replay booth, calling to see if, and it's a legitimate question, the knee was down before Pianalto stretched the arm into the end zone. Take a look. See the hit. I mean, just the wherewithal to know where to go. Uh, the I mean, the tackle made there by Dominique Reese. It's a great tackle. It is. It really now, is. But again, knee down, ball in end zone. Yeah. I'll go with the high IQ guy. I mean, just the foresight to know what to do with that. And then secure the ball with your hand, like Connie Hawkins. Well, the old NBA superstar. I mean, Palmer, that ball getting over the end zone. I love that. Now, the question is. Did the knee go down before the ball crossed the plane? Who do you think I'm going to vote? I know. You favor the tight end absolutely. being one? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to kind of go with uh, North Carolina first. And After the review, the running up the field stands. There you go. Touchdown. You win again, Doc. Tar Heel setting up for the point after. Trace Jones holding for the point. Casey Barnes. <laughs> Brother Connor kicked here from Wilmington, North Carolina. True freshman. All is up and through the uprights in North Carolina. An impressive drive. And Doc made the key. They played fast and it worked. They played fast. Pianalto from eight yards out for the score for the Tar Heels. Today's game is brought to you in part by Allstate. Well, the Tar Heels officially go 67 yards in their first drive, but when you count the grounding penalty and the fact they had a holding penalty, that increases to 94 yards. Zach Pianalto with the touchdown, an eight-yard reception from Cam Sexton, his seventh touchdown pass of the season. And the Tar Heels are on the board. Sean Drone was a big part of that with three rushes, 41 yards of the 67 yards, including a 14-yard pass. And here's the short kick, and it's taken up high by... That's going to be Robert Hall. Fans, get your cell phones ready. This is a good one. It's time for our interactive feature called the Alltel Text of War. Now, here is the answer. Here's the question. Who has a better chance at winning the Coastal Division, Georgia Tech or North Carolina? Virginia Tech fans, there's not a third option here, neither, okay? So you, if it's a, if there's a rush of 540 area code calls, we'll know your favorite one over the other. Text your answer, A1 or A2 to 55333. We'll update the results later in the half. First and 10, Georgia Tech from their 35. And that is Roddy Jones, who is smothered out on the end, a loss of two. And Bruce Carter led the charge. Well, this is where it starts. Do your job. Great job of beating the block by E.J. Wilson. That's what started it. He was just better one-on-one. -on -one. And it is Josh Nesbitt at quarterback out of Greensboro, Georgia, 6'1", sophomore. In and out of the lineup this season. Two touchdown passes. And a big threat to run, as he does on first down, and pushes straight ahead. And he gets uh, about three yards before he falls into the arms of Mark Pascal. Let's take a look at the Georgia Tech offense. Jonathan Dwyer needs 101 yards to make 1,000 for the season. Roddy Jones, Lucas Cox behind him. Demarius Thomas has caught four touches and more of passes than anybody in that lineup. Dan Voss up in the offensive line, gone today, and for the rest of the season, Andrew Gardner over there at left tackle. Nick Claydor takes his place, along with Voss, Howard Gilbert, and Austin Barrett. Third down coming in three. Here is Nesbitt, and he's caught in the backfield. 
And that's Quan Sturdivant along with Robert Quinn. And a loss of one. Coach Martin. Dick, Coach Dick, it got to be all over this. Coaching those backers, you made me aware of the fact that they went without a football in practice, trying to get the guys to understand where to be. Sturdivant just showed there he was on point held his responsibility and arrived with a bad attitude. Jermaine Goddard with five interceptions in that backfield, but this is going to be a punting situation for Georgia Tech. Blair, one of the top punters in the ACC at over 41 a kick. Taken there by Trace Jones, and he tries to negotiate his way to the 29-yard line. It's a 46-yard punt, a 13-yard return, so in that top 33, and after the Tar Heels take over, up by seven, back after this word from your local station. SK Menswear is the official wardrobe provider for our ACC football broadcast team. SK Menswear, what do you want? Got a shot of the booth there, first and ten. And a handoff straight ahead after some misdirection, and that was Drone. Tries to get himself up to the 33, and their first drive actually covered a lot of territory. Sexton grounded the ball, went 20 yards back, and this big first down reception by Brooks Foster, and then Sean Drone who accounted for 41 yards of the 67 game. The touchdown coming from Zach Pianalto, and that's how the Tar Heels took the lead. Here they are with their second time with the ball, second down and six. And off Drone. He is shot down. Oh, Darren Morgan had, as you call, evil intention. Well, that's the benefit of chasing the football. The benefit comes in hustle. You get to cut back and then the bolo hit. Man, man, man. That's oh. crazy. Oh, that wow. is crazy. I'll tell you what, John Jones is a tough man. He's got to be take that kind of punishment for two yards. Third down and four for the Tar Heels now. North Carolina on third down. Next to the top side, little is the slot. Looking that way, flag down on the play. And there are two, as a matter of fact, and it's going to be a procedure penalty to wipe out this pass to Greg Little. Well, Greg less courage. <laughs> I mean, he had to go into the right into the fire on that one. I'll tell you what, that's an angry front four, and, and there's a guy who joins him there. Here's Jeff Lane. Five yards. Still third down. So a false start will turn third and four into third and nine now. And Butch Davis looks on. His team has sustained three penalties so far on the first two drives today. Couldn't ask for a better start. You go down, stick the ball right down the Yellow Jackets throat. Score, and then you go three, three down on them. Right now, and they usually dominate people early on. Georgia Tech. Yes, they do. The thing about it, though, Doc, when Carolina sustains these penalties, it takes them out of playing fast. Yeah, makes a difference. You're right. Feels good. Third down and nine. Gets away from Walker. Head, oh, he forgot the football. Fumble, and who's got it? Looks like Cam Sexton got it. For a loss of one yard. Back to the 30-yard line. Dangerous play by Cameron Sexton after he made the decision to run. Vance, Vance Walker, watch it, folks. He's going to put on a clinic on a hit and a spin move. Oh, it was right around that. Watch him recover. Now watch him chase the ball. He never gives up. It's a relentless pursuit. Yellow Jackets now flexing the muscles. Fourth down now, and in the punch going to be Terrence Brown, junior out of, senior out of Fresno, California, and one of the best in the conference as well. 39-8 is his average. Oh, that's a nice one. Big flip. No fair catch caught well by Ronnie Jones, and he has flattened a 50. Brooks Foster took him down. A one-yard return, 50 net. And Georgia Tech has the football at their own 20, down seven. Standing in the heart of the Chapel Hill campus since 1897, the old well has been the visual symbol of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Students can bring good luck to their college careers with a drink from the well on the first day of classes. If I knew that's all it took, <laughs> I could have with a five-gallon drum. Got a report from the North Carolina sidelines that Zach Pianalto who caught that touchdown pass is out for the rest of the game with an injured ankle. 
First and ten. Josh Nesbitt at the controls. And off inside goes to Dwyer, and he threads his way up to the 27-yard line. The Tar Heel defense dock has been stopped this afternoon. Yeah, a lot of pressure on these linebackers. Bruce Carter here shows that he paid a lot of attention in film study. Of course, you're going to get skirt of that. You're going to get Pascal. All of those guys get there in that welcoming committee, and they bring a jackhammer. Jalen McGuire had Quan. North Carolina has Quan Stewart. That's Bruce Carter. Second down and three. Roddy Jones hits the corner, start of it with him, and he may be close to the first down. As a matter of fact, he's got it. They're going to mark him out at the 30 and a half yard line. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Last series, Doc was talking about how North Carolina practiced against the scout team, but the scout team didn't even have the ball. I talked to Butch Davis yesterday. He says one of the toughest things to preparing for a team like this is getting the scout team ready to run the plays because they don't, aren't able to do it. He said he gave them a lot of credit. He says they really gave this defense a good luck over the last couple of days. Gain of five for Georgia Tech brings up first and ten at their own 31. And off now goes to Wire and he pushes it ahead. You've got to watch every little misdirection. He's up to the 39-yard line, a gain of seven again. Rushing defense, 242 yards a game. The Yellow Jackets lead the ACC. As far as defense is concerned, North Carolina is starting to develop a reputation of stopping people. They held Virginia and Boston College to a combined 98 rush yards in the last two games. One loss, one win. Second down, three. Again, it's Dwyer, and he's close to another first down. Mark Pascal makes the tackle, either two or three yards on the game here. If it's three, moves the chain. It's a little bit easier to defend the option if the fullback's not working. If the fullback works for him, you're in trouble because it forces you now to be extremely disciplined, and as soon as you think you've got it figured out, they're going to spring something on you. And the measurement on the play, and the guy you're talking about is Lucas Cox. He makes it through the hole, and he's got the ball, then your day is ruined. You ruined. <laughs> ruined. And call it about two yards on the game. Three would have given him the first down. What it makes now is third down and inches for Georgia Tech. Down here, 7-0. But moving the football in characteristic pattern. Seven, eight, ten-yard chunks. Yeah, and don't forget about Thomas. I mean, they, they can throw it and will throw it. He's got 29 receptions on the season. And right about now, you fall asleep, the band will be playing. Two in backs, Jones left, Lucas right, Lucas in motion. And it's going to be Nesbitt, the quarterback, with the carry. And Nesbitt pushes his way for the first down and more and gets out to the 46 and a half, maybe the 47 yard line, a five yard gain, and Tremaine Goddard with the tackle. And you watch this, the good slant inside. Boy, on that, Robert Quinn came down, man, with a bad intention. <laughs> he came in and disrupted the inside dive. So quarterback Nesbitt, he took it, and he's pretty good himself on the edge. We saw him against Boston College with several key long runs to set up Dwyer for the deciding touchdown. First and ten, Georgia Tech. Here is Nesbitt, caught in his own backfield, fumbles the football. And didn't know it. But they're going to say that it was down by contact. And it's going to be Georgia Tech ball after the loss of two. Back to the 45-yard line. Win with huge pressure. John Blake, defensive line coach for Carolina. Now watch this. You're going to see, watch, I want you to see both ends. They're going to get down the ball. One crashes, one chases. So you got a crasher on the left, a chaser on the right. And that chaser, 42, is Robert Quinn, freshman. Great story about that young man who's faced a lot more than football in his life. Had a brain tumor operation. A senior year in high school. Hand off into the hole. It's Dwyer. And Dwyer pushes ahead and gets over the 50-yard line, shy of the first down by a bunch. To the 49 in North Carolina, five-yard gain. It's Georgia Tech's first entry into Tar Heel territory. E.J. Wilson on the tackle. We also have to mention the... You know, Clay, Clay Tour and Barrett, two guys who are accustomed to don't start. Now, due to injuries, Paul's offensive line has changed. Whenever you go to your backups, there's a reason why they weren't starting. 
Well, you're in, time. you're in secure when you're all ACC linemen. Andrew Gardner's not there and won't be there the rest of the season. He had surgery on Thursday. He's recovering in Birmingham, Alabama. Returns to Atlanta soon. Flyers straight ahead, and there's nothing there. He got maybe a yard or two to the Tar Heel 47. Juan Sturdivant, the sophomore from Oakville, North Carolina, you see there, made the tackle. Oh, Austin Barrett came down about 10 yards downfield. 73 flying downfield. You see, defensively, and there Marvin Austin out of Blue High School in the nation's capital. I saw this young man expand his game. Now. Paul Johnson now looking at taking a gamble here. Fourth down and three, and they're going for it. Nesbitt with a long count. If they can get the Tar Heels to jump, they'll get five. And off wire, nothing doing. Tar Heels take over on downs at their own 45-yard line. Cam Thomas stuffs it up. 330 pounds of Cam Thomas. You got to make a decision. First of all, you just dominate on the line of scrimmage. Let it be Mullins in there as well. When you beat them up, that defensive line just captured the line of scrimmage. Great job by Carolina. Well, let's watch the Tar Heels offensively now because after that last series, Cam Sexton came to the sidelines and had his right ankle retake. But where's the playmaker, though? A team mix. First and ten. Here's the end around. Brooks Foster. Picks the corner, gets the first down, and is dragged down to the Georgia Tech 38-yard line. Mario Butler, Cooper Taylor come in for the tackle. It's a 16-yard gain for the Tar Heels and their third big play of the day. Boy, big play, Brooks Foster comes around. Look at the convoy. Great job out on the edge. Ryan Houston with the pile driving block at fullback. Excellent execution on the edge. First and 10 at the 39 at Georgia Tech. Rome and Drone in the backfield. Foster's in the slot. Nix is split wide to the bottom of your screen. Long count. Hand off Drone right up the middle. Talking to John Shute, the offensive coordinator yesterday, he said, I said, can you run on these guys? He said, not very well, but we're just going to have to run right at the big guy. We'll run at, uh, we'll run at Johnson. We'll run at uh, Walker inside. We'll run at Richard and try to run them over and see what we can get. Well, two yards on that play brings up second and eight. I'm going to waste all that time. They spent hitting those sleds or something. <laughs> For sure. Open backfield for a wide out for Cam Sexton. Looking upfield, wants Foster, and he overthrows with coverage from Dominic uh, Reese. Yeah, tough angle for Brooks to adjust to the football. And <laughs> Cameron doesn't have a whole bunch of time to negotiate it either. No, he didn't. He won't this afternoon. Dude. To the sidelines we go in my pocket. Well, you talk about Cameron getting his uh, ankle tape. He's not looking over his shoulder, but I guess good news for North Carolina is that T.J. Yates is in uniform. He's got a baseball hat and a headset on, but his helmet is close by. He returned to practice during the open week, Mike, and uh, he could be ready to go, but... That would have to be Cam Sexton in deep trouble. They might want to move the pocket on this one a little bit. No, they stay in. There we go. Good win. Great catch. They get out to the flats to drone. Get a little bit of room for their punter and get down to about the 32-yard line. Dominique Reese on the tackle. And the secondary for Georgia Tech. Man, they seek it to destroy. Once they recognize what it is, they get there in a hurry. And none of them over a sophomore. Now, young... But again, they get there with bad intentions. Well, we're in that area, the 33-yard line after the gain of six, where you just say, let's take a chance and go for it on fourth. This is the fourth, third fourth down conversion, the second for the Tar Heels. Drone is the setback. North Carolina up seven. To throw is Sexton, has time, now gets out of there, and a flag on the play as Derek Morgan got a hand around him along with Daryl Richard. 72 offense, Haley will be declined. First down. So the penalty is declined on the hold by the Tar Heels, and Georgia Tech takes over on down. Can't be afraid to fail. You need to take a shot at it. I think the kids will respond to you. I like what Butch did. 
I also like what Paul's group did. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Can you make a play? And that time, Daryl Richards would not be denied. Which Davis took a chance, gambled and lost. He's one for two. The loss is seven on the play, and it brings up first and ten for Georgia Tech at the 40-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. Darius Thomas split out wide. You play defense like Carolina plays, you can afford to take a gamble. Same thing with Georgia Tech. And off straight ahead, Dwyer stood up, but falls out to the 44-yard line for a gain of four. Number 21, Jonathan Dwyer. Mark Haskell. Is on the tackle. We get this big game here in Chapel Hill. Everybody's ready. The intentions are high, and Georgia Tech and North Carolina have at it. Zach Pianalto's touchdown reception. The only score in this game is the Tar Heels lead. Today's game is brought to you in part by Allstate. Well, one quarter down and three to go. And maybe more after that as the Tar Heels and the Yellow Jackets. Both trying to build up their impressive resumes in the Coastal Division. And after a touchdown on the first drive by North Carolina, the defense is dug in. This is Jasmine. Calls his own run around the right end and takes it into Tar Heel territory down to the 47 yard line. It's going to be a nine yard game. Juan Sturdivant on the tackle. And our first quarter 18 T first quarter stats. North Carolina leads in rushing yards. No. Passing yards for Georgia Tech because they haven't thrown the ball in 14 plays. <laughs> and that's not unusual. No, it's it is. Uh, it's not what they do, but they're capable of doing it. Get behind the scenes look at some of your favorite teams and players at the AT&T BlueRoom.com slash Forks. First and 10. At the Tar Heel 47. First man through is Dwyer, and he shoots over the 45 down to the 43. Shooting him down is Alaric Mullins. Number 21, Jonathan Dwyer. A three-yard game. Tech, tech number 41, Dwyer Martin came in here needing 101 to get 1,000. Well, Mullins has been impressive. I like what he brought to the table. And Pascal, I mean, you talk about a linebacker's delight. Having those horses up front, he can straight, he feels, he's got great balance. This is one of the reasons why this front seven has been very, very good to Carolina. Earls and Fisher are split wide to the top side. Will Nesbitt look their way or run for the 16th straight time? Here comes number 16. This Squire is down to the 39-yard line. Oh, there's a hard yard. Four hard yards. I mean, right? A rubble. And Pasco on the tackle as you look at him. Watch Pasco. He had to try to jet the vertebrae on this. Now watch him. Seek, destroy. Get off a block. And he keeps going. There he is. Ball carrier right in my lap. Tremaine Goddard came up and helped push the pile back. Third down and two now for the Yellow Jackets. Thomas to the top. The Earls in the slot. Yep, just about. Down to the 39, they need the 37. Nesbitt goes into the hole. Looked like somebody moved early. He's going to be close to the first down. E.J. Wilson and Bruce Carter on the tackle. E.J. Wilson. I swear I thought I thought I, I saw Georgia Tech get off the line a little bit early on that play. You know, nobody caught. I think it was the first game we've seen for at least this length of time where Georgia Tech has not had a run, you know, of 15 yards or more. Yeah. They usually pop that cork. Well, sooner you, than later. Here's a here's a fact here, Doc. 47 plays of 20 plus yards, and they did not get the first down. They're looking at fourth and one. Now, let's see. Uh, I thought I saw movement before the snap. Pretty good. Yeah, left yeah. guard. Little twitch. Ford Howard. Yeah, got across early, but good enough to hide it. Still didn't get him the first down. Fourth and one. Slow down. Seven nothing Tar Heels. Georgia Tech trying to keep their drive alive. Hand off to Wire, and he barely got it off. Yeah. Right into the arms of Robert Quinn and Cam Thomas. Cam Thomas was an ox. I mean, he must have known the snap count. You don't expect this out of a Paul Johnson coach team. I mean, that just got dominated at the point of attack. 
That was nothing happening. Cam Johnson, Cyborg. Our first Cyborg of the day. First and 10 at the 38-yard line of North Carolina here in the second quarter. Tar Heels lead it on a Zach Pianalto eight-yard pass reception from Cam Sexton. And that's been the score ever since. Sexton throw on first. It's short and knocked out of the hands of Akeem Nix. Great coverage there by Mario Butler, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Jumped on that one. Mario can sense it, and I'm sure Coach Womack Unit knows now. Their offense needs a little help. Now, these little spark. They got to flip the script on this. I haven't seen Tech controlled like this before. No, not really. And TJ Yates on the sidelines. There's Michael Johnson. Second down and 10 for the Tar Heels. Flat pass, Brooks Foster. Foster gets by Griffin and threads his way up to the 42-yard line. That'll be a gain of five on the play. It'll bring up third down and five. But look at our Suzuki way of life, and there he is, Lowell Dyer. He's the junior starting center for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Former walk-on. Got a scholarship after spring practice in 2008. Got a double major academically. 3.1 GPA in English, 3.5 GPA in philosophy. And he's got a minor in business, and there he's only at 4.0. Oh, that'd be a former tight end. I know he played tight end in high school. With it. <laughs> Junior from Durham and Riverside High School. Not far down the road here in North Carolina. Third down coming up now. Five. Thrown out of the backfield. Rome's alone set that. Sexton's ball is yeah. knocked down. And was that Morgan? Yes, yep. it was. Derek Morgan. Derek Morgan. The guy who probably gets least publicity from a group of Walker, Richard, and Johnson. All three of those got preseason consideration. Postseason will go to this guy, Derek Morgan, yeah. from Coastal Pennsylvania sophomore. Interesting at the captains at the coin toss, Johnson, Richard, and Walker came out, no Morgan. Maybe he's shy. Roddy Jones back to receive the punt of Terrence Brown as the Tar Heels only got five yards in that drive. He can dig it in. Beautiful tip. Jones at the 12, drops the football and stays right there. 45-yard kick, no return. Let's go to the sidelines. And Mike Hoglitz got a special gift. Got our good friend here, Robert McLaughlin, with Chick-fil-A, the uh, senior manager of sponsorships and event oh, marketing. Yeah. Let's talk about this Chick-fil-A Bowl. You're going to get two great teams this year. No matter That's right, Mike. Bowl season is right around the corner. And outside of the ACC champion, the Chick-fil-A Bowl gets the next pick. So we're fired up about it. Two great teams today. You never know if they'll uh, show up at December 31st at 7.30 at the Chick-fil-A Bowl. And that, that bowl gives a lot of money for scholarships and other things. It does. We give a million dollars, over a million dollars a year, more than any other bowl game to charities and scholarships. Steve, i got more to talk about with Robert, but right now let's get this play. All right, first and ten. First pass of the day. Josh Nesbitt with time. His pass is complete to Thomas. <laughs> Demarius Bebe Thomas from Dublin, Georgia. 14-yard reception. It's not how often you do it. It's how well you do it. Boy, he threw a laser. I told you, can't fall asleep. Thomas, big, good-looking target. 230 pounds, mobile, agile. And then you saw him there. Big-time player. A sophomore out of Dublin, Georgia, first and ten. Nesbitt calls his own number, turns the corner. Cam Thomas slows him down, gets out to the 32-yard line. Let's send it back to Mike Hogwarts. Yes, yeah, we're again with Robert, and I need some help with my Christmas shopping. What can you do? All right, here's the deal. All right, This morning, Doc cornered me. Yeah? And holidays are right around the corner. Doc said he wanted a Chick-fil-A gift card, he wanted a Chick-fil-A calendar, and he wanted a Chick-fil-A party tray all for the holidays. Do you think you can do that for him, Mike? I don't know. Right. I hope you can help right. me out. Help. There you go. Make it Chick-fil-A at halftime. Yeah, make, it re make it rechargeable, man. And they feed us every Friday anyway. So, you, Doc, you're getting a lot of Chick-fil-A. I love it. Second down coming up. And going straight ahead 
is going to be Dwyer for a four-yard gain. Dan Boss, the center. Good surge, man. His hands are full. He's got these two Brahma Bulls on each shoulder. And, yet, and Dan, I like Dan. Dan's been firing off the ball, man. It is hand-to-hand -hand combat right now for this offensive line for the Yellow Jackets. They've got to redeem themselves. They've got stuff on fourth and one. It's third and one now. And a timeout coming here for Paul Johnson's Yellow Jackets to talk things over. On third down conversions, now Georgia Tech is one of four. We'll take a break with them. Timeout on the field at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. Georgia Tech and North Carolina doing battle, and the Tar Heels are up by a score. Today's game is brought to you by Altel, the official wireless partners of fans. Top of the hour, welcome back to Chapel Hill. ACC football from Raycom Sports. Steve Martin, Rick Doc Walker, and Mike Hogwood. North Carolina up 7-0. Georgia Tech third down and one. At their own 36. Nesbitt on his own. Picks up the first down up to the 39-yard line. Mark Pascal on the tackle, but it's a three-yard gain, and it moves the chains. Well, Coach Spencer, offensive line coach for the Yellow Jackets, I know he's got a smile on his face now, so does that man there, because they understood they were challenged. At that time, the Yellow Jackets, low man wins. They fired off the ball and made a play. Our heels have good balance in their 20 plays, 11 runs to nine passes. The Yellow Jackets, not unusual to see them. The fewer passes, the better in a game like this. But they can throw it. Oh, Josh Nesbitt proved it, didn't he? He's back to throw again for the second time today, but he's going to run out of the pocket and gets the first down and more. He's in Tar Heel territory at the 48-yard line. It's going to be a gain of 14. Tackle made by Juan Sturdivant. Hey, what, when you lose the best offensive lineman, you have got to be able to fill it in. That time Nick Claytor was in a man-to-hand -to -hand combat. He kind of won that battle, but it was close. Great pressure outside by Richard Quinn. Big play for the Yellow Jackets. Nesbitt has run for 436 yards, a four-yard average, and six touchdowns this season. He's got 40 so far this afternoon. Back to throw, Nesbitt. To the flats and overflows Lucas Cox. Pressure on the play by Bruce Carter and Juan Sturdivant covering. Man, that was a welcoming committee there. They had a three-man party saying, welcome to Chapel Hill. And that's great pressure. Inside, outside pressure. That's just tough, though. He is. He's banged around every week, and he just... Finds a way to get himself back in there and lead that Yellow Jacket offense. Our first and ten lines brought to you by SeatExchange.com, the official ticket exchange partner of the ACC. Second down and ten. Now, this is why Paul Johnson doesn't let you throw. Cox is a setback. On the option, Nesbitt, and runs right back into Tydreek Powell. Two, a redshirt freshman from a Husky, North Carolina. Gain of about four on the play. Getting up slow now. You, the one thing, Cord Howard, Biggin for the Yellow Jackets. They try to do things, reverse pivots, make you stay home, but you can't. They couldn't. They could afford to be hurt. Uh, What's that ankle? Yep. Oh yeah. Has been bothered by a high ankle sprain all season long. Third down now and six. Georgia Tech on third is two for five. Back to throw, Nesbitt, pass complete. And it's going to be Zach Fisher with his third reception of the year. Richard Freshman from Marietta, Georgia. It's a seven-yard gain, and it looks like it's going to be a Georgia Tech first down. Yes, it is. Move the chain. He bobbled a little bit, but held on. I was watching Coach Preston work with his wide receivers, you know, before free game. And these guys go after it, and they understand it may not get the volume, but they have a great value to the football team, and you're going to be maybe in man coverage. It's going to be a, a chance to make a lot of big plays. They've okay, had 50 receptions this year in their passing game, and Demarius Thomas is 29 of them. Wire. Oh, my goodness. Carries people for the first down. This guy is a great A back. Bronco Bull. See, he, he knows it. They need a spark. You know, they, they, they've got to get something going. He's taking it on his own. Now watch this at the end. 
That's just running with attitude. Realize that you're going to get hit. And Gunnar, and Gunnar is a man who is very talented, not shy, will come there and bring, bring a challenge to you. This is the ninth play of the drive. Wire. Set up in the backfield behind Josh Nesbitt. First and 10 at the North Carolina 25. Nesbitt shot down in the backfield. Quan Sturdivant. Great open field tackle by this great looking sophomore. Loss of one on the play. You say sophomore, boy, you cut a projector on and you go, are you sure about that? I mean, this kid gets off play. This time, follows his responsibility. You got quarterback. He stayed on quarterback. Never even looked up to the ball. Took care of the quarterback. Seventh tackle for Juan Sturdivant in this game. A loss of one on the play. Sturdivant and Bruce Carter. Three very active linebackers for the Tar Heels. Haven't seen any turnovers yet. Here comes Nesbitt to throw. Straight drop back. And he's pursued by Pasco, gets rid of it the last second. But unlike Cam Sexton on the first drive of the game, Nesbitt was well outside the pocket. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Steve, it's obvious that Josh Nesbitt is not 100% right now. He was over on the uh, Georgia Tech sideline. They retaped his ankle. And then the trainers keep coming, wanting to talk to him. He stands up and waves him away. He won't let a trainer anywhere near him. He really wants to gut it out and play. They have a capable replacement in true freshman Jay Bo Shaw. Did you see the pursuit? Mark Pascal put on that ball. Oh, yeah. Pascal and E.J. Wilson in there. I mean, they went after him like a wild boar. Third down and 11. Georgia Tech, three of six on third. Nesbitt, the pitch to Dwyer. Heads to the left corner, and he's brought down a great open field tackle by Dante Williams. Yeah, Ronnie Jones has got to go because he slowed it back up. He wasn't waiting on no block. Guard was going, but Roddy was kind of like on a different page. And you watch this. He gets through. They haven't had a lot of big runs, a lot of daylight. But see, Roddy Jones has got to go attack color. Go get the guy down, and you maybe your back scores. Scott Blair is on the kick to field goal. It's going to be a 40-yard attempt. He's 8 of 9, 40 and inside. His longest is 39 yards. Anderson, here's the kick, it is up, and it is no good. Wide to the right for Scott Blair, now 8 of 14 on the season, and the Tar Heels take over. North Carolina leads Georgia Tech 7 to nothing. Back after this word from your local ACC station. Today's game brought to you in part by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. North Carolina first and 10 from their own 23-yard line after the missed field goal. Here comes Sean Jones. Got some open running room before he goes down in the grass for Michael Johnson. But not before it's a nice gain of about five yards. You look at this game, Doc, so far. After the first drive, these two teams have kept each other inside the 30. Yeah, kind of settled in. Although, if Johnson doesn't make that play, we might be... He might have strike, had to strike the band up. Oh, yeah. They've got some gas, some holes... That, uh, I mean, I haven't seen this before. Second down and about four after the six-yard game. And off drone. Another big hole. They ran right at Michael Johnson. He makes yet another tackle, but gives up three yards on the play. And it's going to bring up third down and one. ACC football brought to you in part by your local Toyota dealer. Toyota's keys are featured on RayComSports.com. Those keys, Georgia Tech, keep the pressure up, and North Carolina finding time to throw. Talk a lot about the 6'7", 270-pound defensive end. I mean, that's just getting it done. That's just, you treated Bobby Rome in there like he was a gnat. <laughs> Third down and one. North Carolina up here by seven. And off Ryan Houston. Houston turns the corner. And is pushed out of bounds by Butler at the 49-yard line. It's a 19-yard game. You know, we chart big plays in this game, and North Carolina's got five. Georgia Tech still waiting for their first. You know, Pinalto is out. Now watch that right there. You see that tag block? Tight end Richard Quinn 
That was a, just enough to keep Morgan Burnett inside and open up the edge for the Tar Heels. Tar Heels doing a nice job on the perimeter this yeah. afternoon. Braun and Rome are the setbacks now for Cam Sexton, first and ten at the Georgia Tech 39. And off drone, and he is just pushed back. Darrell Richard. Oh, boy. Wow. But went reverse. Forward progress is given as one yard to the 48 yard line. You see, the thing I like about Carolina's offense, they play big boy offense. I mean, they're not trying to trick you, they're trying to knock you off the ball and then beat you with the pass. And they'll get cute and try to get on the edge and put a reversal here or there. But it always comes down to the fact that can you run the football? And they're trying to make sure they can. Georgia Tech had to deal with Greg Carr a week ago. They've kept Hakeem Nix away from the football so far today. Second down and nine. Here goes Sexton trying to change that, and the pass is incomplete intended for Christian Wilson. Morgan Burnett broke it up. Burnett, Kyle Jackson. I mean, they can't, they, you know, the, the thing about this unit on defense is I think they said we got to make a play. We might have to score. We need that one little infusion to get our offense going. Yeah, that's on Yavi is in there. Defensive tackle. North Carolina coming up on third down for the ninth time today. They are two and six in converting third to first. Their conversion rate across the ACC is second on third down at 45 percent. Not so today. Against the stout Georgia Tech defense. And now a timeout is called with 3.06 left to go here in the first half. North Carolina wants to talk things over with a one touchdown lead over Georgia Tech. The victory bell in Carolina's possession after the Duke game last year. Sits on the Tar Heel sideline watching North Carolina at third and nine. And taking the knee here is going to be Cam Sexton. He brings it back. Looks like they want to give up some room for Terrence Brown to get a punt away here on fourth down. That's an interesting play. Cam looking to the sidelines. Is that you sure that's what you wanted to do? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I know I've seen it once before. I don't recall where. And I certainly don't know why. They thought the tech might jump as he pulled away. They did not. Still nine yards away from the first down. Brown gets off of beauty. At the 10, it's going to be Roddy Jones. And he's run up to the 17-yard line. 44-yard kick and a seven-yard return. Great job by the release men for Carolina getting downfield. Hey, what do you buy for that chicken eater who has everything? Well, Chick-fil-A gift cards and Chick-fil-A trays. Chick-fil-A trays, perfect for game days, birthdays, and Mondays. Reloadable Chick-fil-A gift cards. A great gift for any occasion. And here's our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game. North Carolina has trailed in all six wins this season. Three times the Tar Heels have rallied from deficits of at least 10 points. Speaking of nuggets, I could use some now here. Good yes. fill. have been lobbying hard. And this is going to be... Wire again as he goes up and in the middle of that defense for a two, maybe three yard gain. Robert Quinn on the tackle. Quinn, quite a story. He uh, operated on for a brain tumor. That's a tumor was blocking his spinal cavity in the senior year of what was a stellar high school career, recruited and offered by South Carolina, by Alabama, by North Carolina. And all schools said if he never plays football again, the scholarship offer stands. But he's come back and he's played well in this game today. Second down and eight on the option play. Here comes Nesbitt, shakes off one tackle. And Pascal leads a charge of Tar Heels and slow him at the 26-yard line. It'll be a six-yard game. Mark Pascal, his dad, Doug Pascal, was an outstanding running back in the mid-70s here in North Carolina. He got 1,700 yards in his career. Dad, I talked spoke with his dad before the ball game down there. I oh, did you? Yeah, dad was looks like he can still suit up. <laughs> <laughs> now the Suns got eight tackles today. Third down and two for Georgia Tech. They're three and seven on third down. Nesbitt pushes ahead and he just may have it. Down to the 29-yard line. Marvin Austin on the tackle. It's a three-yard gain and move the chains. And our Polaris ATV, toughest player of the game, Mark Pascal, already eight tackles and a quarterback, Hurry, 
for the middle linebacker out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Bob Polaris, toughest player. Back to throw now. Taking that head is Nesbitt. And Nesbitt shakes off tacklers and drags the whole party down to the 37-yard line. Marvin Austin nearly had a big play. Tackle for loss, but again, you see what Josh Nesbitt and his many talents, escapability, watch the guy there getting by you. You know, pretty good football players he's eluding. Timeout on the field, 55 seconds remain in the first half. It's North Carolina up 7-0. Second down and two, and we're in the second quarter here. 55 seconds left to go. Georgia Tech takes its second timeout. And they're looking for first down here. An opportunity to get a score before halftime. Sprinting out, this is Josh Nesbitt. Goes down the sidelines into the blue bench. Now, this is why this game is so important. You look at the Coastal Division standings. Georgia Tech leads the way at 4-2. and two. North Carolina at 2-2. Two and two. Everybody in the swim here has a chance for bowl eligibility, and they're still on the road to Tampa. But there's a team in the middle, Virginia Tech, that threw down the standard on Thursday night. Why that win over Maryland was important, Virginia Tech has wins over both Georgia Tech and North Carolina. And these two coaches know how big this game is. The winner stays on Georgia Tech's heels, so to speak. Third down. Here comes Roddy Jones, and he breaks into the secondary and heads down the sideline. Strong run. Knocked out of bounds by Tremaine Goddard, and the first big play of the day for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets coming on third down. Boy, it may look easy, but there's nothing easy about it. Carolina's been nearly impossible to get a, get around the corner. You mentioned it, Quinn, there with a good effort. Question is, how long did he stay in before Goddard lowered the boom? Roddy Jones, 14-yard carry. 11-yard carry, they say officially now, but it's good enough for a first down. Clock rolling with, well, the clock will start when the ball is snapped with 41 seconds left to go. Rush gets rid of it, and it's off to the sideline. Corey Earls, the intended receiver. Big pressure coming off for North Carolina. The good news for Carolina is that when you play Georgia Tech, they don't have to go to prevent. Prevent has been where they've had problems. When they're in regular base, they are ferocious. Oh, they've had three hair-raising two-minute drives on them that they actually four this season that have been pivotal at the end of games. They've successfully defended two. They've been beaten on two. Yeah. And it's hard because you create so much space when you, you, know, you rush three. Second down and ten. All two yards shy of midfield. Straight drop back for Nesbitt. Pass rush on, pass complete. And that's going to be Corey Earls, the sophomore out of Macon, Georgia. That's his first reception of the season. It's a 16-yard pass reception. Now watch it. Once he makes up his mind, he puts a lot of heat on that ball. I mean, he can throw it. Georgia Tech wants to play fast. And now they down the football to stop the clock with only one timeout left in 27 seconds. They've got to be conscious of their field position. They're at the 36. They need to get it about 11 more yards to get into suitable field goal range. Yeah, you got to get you get along with 39 on the season, but you, you want to make a statement. I mean, look at it. They've been in a dog fight, but Carolina's only up seven zero. That's right. So their defense has allowed them life. Well, they've stayed close in some games early and come on at the end. Uh, their first their season over in the conference. And they get the ball. They get the ball. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they win the toss in the two. Second down. Nesbitt with time. Now rolls out. And the pass is complete. It's Thomas at the 31-yard line. Now, it's not good for a first down. It stops the clock with 15 seconds left to go. It gets them six yards closer to prime kicking area. Boy, Austin uh, Barrick is highly competitive on that deal. You got to do what you got to do. Timeout called by Georgia Tech. That's their last timeout. Try to protect your quarterback. Inside slant. Watch it right there. Great move inside. Right at the bottom. Now, pretty good. Pretty good. Great effort by E.J. Wilson. Rushing like a madman. 
coming back to come back to the football. I mean, Thomas is premium, premium receiver. Yeah, that's his 31st pass reception of the season. A look at the Hampton Hotel's upcoming schedule. For the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, they're running out of ACC opponents. They have one more with Miami before their traditional season closer at Georgia. And, of course, for the Tar Heels, they got a couple of games in hand against ACC opponents. They play at Maryland next Saturday, and then they're home against NC State on the 22nd and at Duke on the 29th. So two out of three on the road for the Tar Heels. Both teams have difficult roads to Tampa at this point. Third down and four. Have to come down to the final week. Nesbitt. Looking, looking, throw is incomplete. Hit the ground first, and now they'll have to kick the ball away in less than ideal field position. Good block. The receiver was early. Good block by Roddy Jones. And they had to try to secure that edge to give him a chance. Again, right-handed quarterback rolling to his left. Not as easy, but he had a chance. On to attempt the field goal. Well, Blair marches out here. This is going to be a 47-yard field goal attempt. Chandler Anderson coming out to hold. If he hits it, it'll be a career high, and now we've got a whistle. A yellow flag here coming down. And this makes the kick even more difficult. And that's not good. An illegal substitution pushes them back, and 47 becomes 52 should Paul Johnson decide to kick it away here. Especially when your longest is 39. They're 0 for 2 plus 50. But he's got the leg. It's one thing if whether or not you're accurate, but the question is, do you have the leg? He's got the leg. All right, sophomore out of Calhoun, Georgia. On for a 52-yarder from the right hash mark out of the hold of Chandler Anderson. Kick is up, and it went straight and wide to the right. Second missed field goal for Blair. So I have to look at his teammates here and say, hey, illegal substitution pushed us back out of logical way. Yeah, took him out. Looking like my golf game. You <laughs> length, but no accuracy. It, you know, it's where you lined up and hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds left to go in this first half. North Carolina will come out and probably down the football here. Check the operation out. This is important. He's got there in a hurry. Look good. It was almost long enough, but it just went straight yeah. wide right. That ends the first half of play as the Tar Heels make an opening drive touchdown stand up here. Zach Pianalto catches the eight-yard aerial from Cam Sexton and puts the Tar Heels on the board, and they make it stick. 7-0 in a defensive struggle. These two teams try to keep their head above water and stay in step with Virginia Tech in the coastal division of the ACC. Both trying to stay on the road to Tampa. Standing by with Paul Johnson is our Mike Hogwarts. Coach, what do you have to do to get this offense on track in the end? Well, we got to find a way to get the ball in the perimeter a little bit. We're getting beat up. Trying to load the linebackers, and they're running through the blocks with Cam Bach. What about the health of your quarterback, Josh? He's fine. All right. That's Paul Johnson, obviously. Got a lot to talk about to his team in the locker room. They trail 7-0 here at halftime. Now there's the statue of Charlie Choo Choo Dustus, one of the most dynamic players ever to don a football uniform at the University of North Carolina, a native of Asheville, North Carolina. Very highly honored, and we're getting ready to hear to start the second quarter, or the third quarter, second half, if you will. North Carolina up 7 0. Our Mike Hogwood just moments ago had this short chat with Butch Davis. Coach Davis, what'd you tell the guys in the locker room there? Well, I mean, we've got to keep playing, doing our responsibilities, stay with a lot of the same things that we were doing in the first half, being disciplined on defense. Offensively, we got to take advantage of some better field position. All right. All right, that's Butch Davis. All right. ACC football is presented 
in high definition where available by MFS Investment Management, a diverse range of products so advisors can choose what fits. No need to follow up Butch's comments. You know exactly what the Tar Heels have to do. Here's what Georgia Tech has done in the first half as they get ready to take the ball back. They've had three drives of ten plays or more and have nothing on the scoreboard to show for it. Yeah, that, that is it's frustrating in one, one side of it, but the other thing is that you know you can do it. You're capable. They're one big play away from being in this ball game, all over this ball game for that matter. Marcus Wright and Roddy Jones are back deep from the kick from Wooten, and we are underway for the second half, and this is Marcus Wright at the lip of the end zone. Wright Pops through the wedge and falls at the 26 to 27 yard line. Josh Nesbitt, the question about his ankle comes into being, but he's the leading ground gainer for this game for both sides. You see him come up a little game there. He's thrown the football four times, limps ahead to see the result. Two of his passes caught by Demarius Thomas. And here you see him on this run on route to 61st half yards. He's gained more than Jonathan Dwyer. He's gained more than Sean Drone of North Carolina. And he's, he's the central quick. figure. He's quick. He's got his quickness, but he does not have his explosiveness. He doesn't have his left tackle that's accustomed to seeing out there. And this is Nesbitt calling his own number. He can get it back you though now. <laughs> <laughs> That's as close to a naked sweep as you'll see that <laughs> One yard game. First half offense. There's Nesbitt in the air. We have a Tar Heel down, but Jonathan Dwyer with a 3.8 average, 15 rushes, 57 yards. Demarius Thomas has caught two of the four passes. Mark Pascal, we understand, is the player who is down. Is he the player down? And he has nine tackles, and now he's getting up. Yeah, what a first half. When you get nine for a game, that's admirable. You get nine and a half, man. Put you on one of those rickshaws and take you to class on Monday. <laughs> the Vela Okafu is going to be taking his spot at middle linebacker. Georgia Tech now, second down and ten. These two schools battling and, and to stay in the thick of things. You know, we've talked about Virginia Tech. We've talked about these two schools. Do not forget Miami. They're three and two, and they have joy at Virginia Tech next Thursday. Young Guns in Miami, boy. Second down and ten. Pass to the flats. It's complete. It's going to be to Thomas, and he stays on his feet. And inbounds long enough to get the first down and moves the football out to the 39-yard line. It's a gain of 13 on the play. Hey, what? There's only one Calvin Johnson. But I'll tell you what, this young man here is impressive. I mean, he can do this. First of all, I like the fact that he's a team guy. He's a team guy. He realizes that this, he can be all you can be within this offense. And I think, you know, and Paul Johnson has said, hey, when I get more recruits in there to throw the ball to, we will. Yeah. Pitch to the A back is going to be Roddy Jones. And he gets up above the 40 yard line of the 42 game of three. Taking the tackle, George Henry. Every, well, not every, for the most part, every coach you get around is going to say, hey, what do we got to do in the third quarter? First of all, you got to come out. And you want to sustain the drive, get some points on the board. They're over two down the scoring range. And uh, clearly, they're better than that. Second down and seven. Nesbitt carries and runs right smack dab into E.J. Wilson. He's junior from Emporia, Virginia, defensive end. Coach Weathers, and I guarantee you that Coach Davis got to be so thrilled. In fact, even though in, on that time, a rare time, you see third of it miss the tackle, but then what is it supposed to be? And they're there in layers. Well, it's happened now over three games now, from the Virginia game to the Boston College game, and now here. Uh, this team defensively seems to get better every week. Yeah, no, they, they're going to be really good. They're down in six. Georgia Tech, five and ten on third, the pass to the flats. It's complete to Thomas, but it's shy of the first down. It gains only two and brings up fourth down. Jordan Hemby makes his second stop in this series. Yeah, and at 5'10", 185, good move by Jordan. Again, the pass goes out. May have been deflected. But you've got a horse over there. you got to break down. You hope you get some help from your friends. 
they were able to pull it off. But you can tell that had one and a half time wrinkles we'll see. They're going to get the ball in the hands of Thompson as often as possible. Scott Blair on the punt the football. Second punt of the game. Paul Johnson decides to go for field position here. It's an end over end kick. Paul Fair catch called for at the 21 yard line. Not a very long kick. Doesn't take him inside the 20. It's a 35 yard punt and no return. As the Tar Heels set up for their first offensive series of the second half, up 7 0 over Georgia Tech. Select menswear. Visit skmenswear.com to, to shop online or find a location near you. First and 10, North Carolina. This is Greg Little turning the corner, getting into the secondary, and fighting off Morgan Burnett until he got out to the 41 yard line. It's a game of 17 for the Tar Heels on their first play from scrimmage in the second half. And if Morgan Burnett didn't use good judgment, it would have been a 15 tagged on that. That's just good blocking. Watch that little. See, he gets the block. Romy, excuse me on that. Bobby Rome gets the block, knocks him out. Now, watch this. See, all Little had to do then was just fall down. Another 15 would have come up. Not smart play by Brunette. Ball out to the 39-yard line, first and 10. Sexton hands off to Drone. Falling on his Drone. And he gets up to the 43-yard line. That's a gain of four. Now Jackson on the tackle. Let's see what the Tar Heels did. They scored their first possession with the football and then just kind of moved the ball around for field position after that. North Carolina with a 67-yard drive. Even, even on that drive, had fits and starts. They had a down on the ball penalty to start the drive. That pushed it back 20 yards. They had another holding call that pushed it back another 10 yards. Still, they scored. And after that, get up on downs once and three punts. Second down now and six. Drone goes right up the teeth of that defensive line, but Number 20, Sean Brown, Jackson, yeah, yeah, nothing yeah, happened yeah, there. No yeah, gain off the play for North Carolina. They bring up third down and six. The Tar Heels stars offensively. Camp Sexton, five of ten, and a, and a uh, touchdown, actually, to Westbrook. The playmaker has yet to hit the dance floor. That's right, Hakeem Nix. Nothing there. Third down and six. throw Sexton pass complete first play of the day out there to Hakeem Nix and he gets into Georgia Tech territory at the 45 yard line it's going to be a 14 yard game up to this point Hakeem Nix had just been kind of wandering out occupying defensive backs Dominique Reese follows him pretty close cover They've always known where Hakeem Nix has been on the field. And finally, just moments ago, they find him for the first time in the year. Nix, 161st career reception. And here's Cam Sexton. He carries the ball. Cedric Griffin, a little play action there. And on the stop. He's got a little speed, too. Cam Anthony Barnes was about to close in. And Cam tucks it, then gets away. Game five on the you know, uh, John Shoup, offensive coordinator, told me yesterday, he says, you know, we got to get some yardage out of the quarterback. We got to get, he's got to get us at least 30 yards to take some of the pressure off up front. Yeah. So far, it's working, well, you know, well, we say well, they've got possession. You know, you, I just feel like if they get in the end zone now, it's going to be really difficult for Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech has yet to journey into the red zone here this afternoon. North Carolina has been there once. Pass almost intercepted by Dominique Reese. Good coverage out there. Intended for the tight end that time. That was Richard Quinn. Butler and Reed. I mean, these cornerbacks at Georgia Tech, they'll break on the ball. Wow. Boy, that's magnificent. Very well done. We're talking about a freshman. Dominique Reese. Making the break out of Auburn, Alabama. He was injured last week. And Cooper Taylor took his spot. Third down and five for the Tar Heels. They are three of eight on third. They lead 7 nothing. Flair pass off the mark. Actually closer to Mario Butler. Intended for Greg Little, and that'll bring the punting unit off. 
for the Tar Heels to go three and out. Number 19, Darren Brown, six and on for the Tar Heels. The to punt. See their drive die at the 38-yard line. Number 20, back for the Yellow Jackets. The fans are going to say, well, we might want to try, try to call up 88 a little more often. The team mix. We saw him here, boy, just having an explosive breakout game against Boston College. And Brown has a long of 53 this year. Back to punt this away. Won't need that. It's inside the 20. Oh, and took a Georgia Tech bounce because it went into the end zone and comes back for a touchback. He planted a 38-yarder, but there was too much forward roll carrying into the end zone, and so Georgia Tech takes over. They come back with a football of their own. 20, a defensive struggle between the heels and the Jack. Georgia Tech's going to change at quarterback. It's J. Bo Shaw, a true freshman. He's been in this spot before. Pitches quickly to Dwyer, who is tripped up by Williams. Look at Jabo Shaw. He's from Flowery Branch, Georgia. As we said, true freshman, six feet tall, 15 of 24 in the air, 62 percent, 321 yards and two touchdown passes. He's run for three touchdown runs this year. Uh, took over for Josh Nesbitt on the first offensive series against Mississippi State and really was impressive. Dwyer now down on a knee, and that would be a big blow as. Uh, one of the things Paul Johnson told us about, there's really no backup for Dwyer. He's going to take his uh, A back, his B back, or his full back, if you will, Lucas Cox, and put him in position, and that's what it's done. But Jay Bo Shaw under the controls. He'll handle this play himself and squirts ahead for the first down to the 33-yard line before going down on the grass for Bruce Carter. Look at the accurate scoreboard. Texas trying to recover from their loss to Texas Tech. Ohio State up 14. So is Michigan State. Georgia staying relevant for the lead at the half. Wyoming leading Tennessee. Of course, Phil Fulmer done after the season. In Knoxville, first and 10. And a fumble on the snap that Jay Ball Shaw gets down on for no game. Something like a fumble to keep your game off schedule, and that's one of the worries that Paul has in this offense. Yeah, you know, you just wondered. They're so thin, the margin for error now is virtually non-existent. A.J. Smith in his left guard now. you got to wonder if Ford Howard is in. Well, or possibly Paul just wants to get some rest for that thin front line. Of course, uh, David Brown out with the biggest loss is Andrew Gardner. Down for the season with an operation on his left label. And now, Wire is back in the field and he is carried into the backfield, but his forward progress is two. Let's go to the side. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwarts. Well, the first note is Josh Nesbitt is not injured. He still wants to play, but they're trying to switch it up here. Jabo Shaw played second half last week against Florida State. He admitted he had his worst game of the season. Paul Johnson confirmed that with us. It's going to be interesting to see how this true freshman responds after a subpar game a week ago. As you saw that last play, Jonathan Dwyer is back on the field. Second down, Shaw calls his own number, runs by Quan Sturdivant, and is brought down after he got the first down. Over there by Cam Thomas, who lost his helmet after the nine-yard game by Shaw. No matter how it looks, it's successful. And we, we've seen him. We watched him against Mississippi State and demonstrate that he, you know, he grew up in this offense. He's not scared. And he gives them, right now, he looks quicker in his movement. First and 10. He's got him out over the 43-yard line. They've had some long marches today, and the ground game is continuing to carve up yardage in seven and eight yard increments. This is a seven yard game. I mean, Josh has a lot of, you know, when Josh gets open in the open area, he can give you a little wiggle and go. But right now, Shaw is just quicker. He's quicker in his movements. He holds on to that football, decisive, makes a good decision. Gilbert and company, offensive line gave a real good scene. Got a nice block from uh, Dwyer, too, as he went into the hole. Second down and three. Shaw pitches at the last second. Roddy Jones on his way and tripped up. Dante Williams on the tackle. But it's good for a first down. It is uh, 
Georgia Tech's deepest penetration in Tar Heel territory today, a 21-yard gain by Roddy Jones. This is the beauty of this offense. This was nearly a defensive highlight that was almost turned into an offensive score. You get a good block downfield, down yonder, by Zach Fisher, and it opened up the door. At the Tar Heel, 29. Georgia Tech trailing here 7-0. Dwyer gets the call, a flag thrown into the fray here. As Dwyer makes about three, pending the result of the penalty. Jeff Flanagan making the call. Paul Johnson, one of only 14. Football Bowl Championship Series coaches who calls his own plays. He's the offensive coordinator. That backs them up. Back to the 43-yard line. They were down to the 29. Their deepest penetration of the day. First and 24 this is. Earls and Thomas are the setbacks. The pitch comes to Dwyer. Dwyer trying to turn the corner. Couldn't square his shoulders. And forced out of bounds at the 39. We got a flag down at the 41. This could be again against Georgia Tech. Oh, the preliminary indication Earls. is hold. Hey. Holding number 15 offense, 10 yards, still first down. Right on the money, Doc. Yeah, and it's hard. You like, you would applaud the effort. But you have to maintain your technique. And the lucky, see, this is the things right now that drive coaches nuts. You know, that could have been called. A little bump out of bounds. The kid's out of bounds. You don't want, to, you don't want that to happen to you. First and 31 for Georgia Tech. They're back up to midfield. The throw, J. Bo Shaw caught in a very unnatural position by Bruce Carter. A loss of five on the play. Yeah, this gets eaten up. They're trying to get new linemen in. That's just beating you right off the ball. Great outside move. See the relentless pursuit. That's coming Michael, around the corner. That's Michael McAdoo. Second and 36. Great execution. Yes. Got him in reverse. Now second and 36. Back to the Georgia Tech. 45. Shaw on the late pitch to Roddy Jones. Numbers. Hits the corner. And a nice shoestring tackle there by Charles Brown. Back up cornerback on the right on the left side. An 18-yard gain on the play. Man, it's amazing to get chunks. I mean, they get if they get out on that edge with that toss, they get big chunks. They've lost big chunks on this drive. They're back to third and 18. The line to get, Doc, is the North Carolina 19-yard line. Yeah. Thomas with a big block on that run. Georgia Tech, 6 of 12 on third. Trailing 7-0. J. Bo Shaw takes his own number. And he is close to getting to the original line of Ball scrimmage. Ball down and we've had no turnovers. That will be our first of the game. If it is, and it is not, it's going to be Georgia Tech ball. Boy, Carolina's defense is good enough not to help them. You get a hold it, you get a couple of penalties, and it's tough. And the heels are really going after it. Seven-yard gain on the play. E.J. Wilson and Quan Sturdivant on the tackle. It brings up fourth down, and it's going to bring the field goal unit on. This will be from the 30-yard line, so mark it back seven yards to the 37. And for the second time today, a 47-yard field goal attempt, although last time they lined up for this, it took a penalty, and it backed it up to 52. They're on the right hash. Now it's going to be a quick kick. Smart play. Yeah, if you can get it down, it's a genius, but nope, they didn't. Now, they almost had it at the one. They wind up giving North Carolina the ball on a touchback on a 30-yard punt to the 20-yard line. Timeout on the field. 3.01 left to go here in the third quarter. Still North Carolina. Back after this word from your local station.
time to update our Altel Text of War poll. We're asking you which team has a better chance of winning the Coastal right now. More feel that North Carolina has it. Well, add your voice to the vote. Text A1 or A2 to 55333. Little end around. Brooks Foster. Nice block on the corner. Puts the brakes on and comes to a halt at the 24-yard line. A gain of four. About 20 yards north-south, but four yards east-west. Yeah, but a plus four. Yellow Jacket defense. I mean, what do you do? I just can't say enough. Well, here's what they've done. Here's something to back that up. North Carolina got 67 yards on their first drive, and in five possessions since, only 96 yards. That's how good they are. Yeah. Yellow Jacket defense trying to keep their team in here until their offense can crank out a touchdown. Or the defense can get opportunistic. Drone straight ahead, plows down to the 27-yard line. Gain of two, maybe three. It'll bring up third and short. Rear Derek Morgan in on the tackle for Georgia Tech. And, of course, Georgia Tech with that great front line. Morgan, Walker, Richard, Johnson. It's not a law firm. It's a defensive front four. It's a collective agency. <laughs> when they come after you, baby, like they that. come to get paid. <laughs> you bet. And don't run. Third and two. North Carolina, three of nine on third down. Came in here, number two in the ACC in third down conversions, and this will be one more they miss. As Hakeem Nix is the intended receiver, and true freshman Rashid, Rashad Reed made him pay. Rashad Reed, man, it's my kind of corner. I can't stand to see guys let third down passes get caught in front of them. Rashad Reed takes a shot on it. He knows where the receiver wants to be, and he's there. Nice play. Fourth down and two. Terrence Brown now getting ready to punt the ball away. Roddy Jones is the deep back. Carolina's got to get greedy, see. Here comes the kick. They're an opportunistic team. They like to pick people up. Losing the ball is Jones. Ball is still loose. Do we see our first break of the game? Still, they're unpiling them. See who's got the loose football. It's North Carolina on the first turnover of the day. A 44-yard punt, no return, a fumble by Roddy Jones, and the Tar Heels pick it up in Georgia Tech territory at the 30-yard line. Got to be able to, to make plays. You call a fair catch, you know, ball went right down the pipe, and then that old recovery drill that every team from Pop Warner up goes through it. Sometimes it just doesn't bounce, bounce your way. Brooks Foster has just had a fabulous day covering punts for Carolina. He just crawls to that thing. And off Drone. Drone picks up nice yardage down to the 20-yard line. North Carolina now on the lip of the red zone. Nine or ten yards there for Drone. The sophomore from Tarboro, North Carolina, and they say he did move the chains a 10-yard game. This offense got a second chance. Three and punt, three and pu five and punt. Now they got a chance to really make it difficult for the Yellow Jackets if they can hit pay dirt. Next is split wide to the wide side of the field. Little is the slot man to that side. Checking out. Sexton throws. Wants a out route there for Little and good coverage by Rashad Reed. Pressure by Derek Morgan. Actually hit Sexton as he threw. Pretty much you can count on that. If you drop back, there's about a 96% chance you will get hit. You won't be alone. You won't be alone. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Georgia yeah. Tech wants to spend a lot of time in your backfield, and they've done so today. And imagine how wild they would be if they were up 14 10. Second down and 10. Nix and Arnold are split wide. Handoff goes to Drone. Drone nice dances cut. in. Nice cut. You're right. Down to the 14-yard line. 
It's a six-yard gain, tackle made by Cedric Griffith. This year, Raycom Sports and CBS College Sports will be presenting the ACC Men's Soccer Championships for free on ACC Select. Catch your team's games online November 11th through the 14th as they compete to be crowned the official ACC champion. Visit theacc.com for more information. We've come to the end, or we're coming to the end, of the third quarter of play. And the Tar Heels of North Carolina are in the red zone. They're at the Georgia Tech 15-yard line. They're trying to convert a fumble on a punt by Roddy Jones and punch it in for what could be a decisive score. There's only been one so far in this ball game. Both teams' defenses have really come to play. Cameron Sexton's come close, but the Tar Heels lead it 7-0. Welcome back to Chapel Hill. The big showdown between the Tar Heels and the Yellow Jackets is ground into a defensive war. But North Carolina is in the red zone for the first time since their first drive of the day. Their third down and about four at the Georgia Tech 15. Sexton, deep handoff on the delay. It's Sean Drone, and he is pushing ahead to the six-yard line. A gain of nine for the Tar Heels who have made their mind up. They're going to try to cash in on this turnover. Again, they've turned it into a manhood issue. And up front, Carolina doesn't have to trick you to score. They're coming off Garrett Reynolds, pile driving, staying high, throwing those hips. I mean, they can sense it now. First and goal from the seventh. Hand off to Ryan Houston, and he pushes the ball down to the two-yard line, dragging Daryl Richard and Derek Morgan along with him. A five-yard game, and again, the pace of this offense. John Shoup wanted them to play fast, and that's what they're doing. There's Playing Woodfield. fast, executing. Again, no matter how, I know we're in the era of the spread offense, all this hocus-pocus. But it still comes down to, if you're going to be a champion, you got to be able to take the opponent's heart, and you do that between the tackles. Second down and goal from the two. Hand off Houston. Touchdown, Tar Heels. He took Morgan Burnett in for the ride. Rome and company. You can talk about how bad you want to get to Tampa, but it comes down to it. Are you willing to take on? Ooh, a little cloth was pulled on that. Came down to a function at the junction, and I guarantee you that Ryan Houston wasn't having it. Casey Barth on for the point after. The operation is good. The true freshman stakes a point onto the touchdown. Ryan Houston into the end zone for the Tar Heels for the sixth time this season. He carries the mail, and North Carolina is up by two scores. <laughs> ACC football brought to you on part by Chevrolet. Time for our Progress Energy Progress Report as we look at the stats through three quarters. Georgia Tech leads in most important statistical categories, but they've got a turnover, which introduced North Carolina to its second touchdown of the day. Good teams make you pay. You turn it over, they stick seven on you. And that's what the Tar Heels did. Kick off by Wooten is fielded by Marcus Wright. Wright works himself into some open territory and takes off and is wrestled down on a helmet tackle down to the 37-yard line. Nice return on the play. All season long, champion apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the ACC. The old well walk has become a strong part of Carolina's football tradition. Tar Heels travel from the team hotel to dropped off at the old well, one of the university's most recognized landmarks, and then the team walks through the main quad of the campus, through the Carolina fans, and into the Keenan Football Center. Butch Davis has lit it up here in Chapel Hill, and that's our champion, How You Play. Last year, through eight games, they were two and six. Right now, they are six and two, and 13 minutes away from possibly being seven and two. Jay Bo Shaw still in, and he's taken down for a sack. Brought down by Cam Thomas, who has been superb today. Five-yard loss on the play. Well, Cam Thomas is my leading candidate right now for the Triple Burger Award <laughs> because the boys played like he's starving. 
I mean, you talk about intensity. He's been dominant on the run, dominant on the pass, played with high energy, chasing the ball down. And for a 330-pounder, that's what they put in the program, times the highest power. That's impressive. Second down, 15. Jabo Shaw to carry. Lost the yardage and the football. Picked up by Pascal, and North Carolina has got it again. Robert Quinn drilled Shaw to pop the ball loose, and Paul Johnson's worst fears have come to fruition. His team on two straight possessions has turned it over twice. Once on a punt when they were going to get the ball back, and here's the second one. Yeah, and Paul knows he came in with his offensive line, low down, he had a short deck, but they've been so close to it. But now, Carolina's starting to flex its muscles. And they're doing it the old-fashioned way. They're knocking the tar out of people, going after it. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing, ain't no camouflaging on this one. This is brutal. They forced 23 turnovers this season, two today. And they have the ball in the short field once more. Yeah, but chasing, that's backside pressure. The field is confirmed. First down, North Carolina. They had a review of the play, and they review that he was not down. And the result of the play stands. Robert and Quinn. <laughs> now we talked about that young man. Of course, Pascal well, with Pascal's the tackle. Sick. I mean, he, he's sick. We had to take him in for evaluation. I mean, this guy pounded people. Look at this. 76 points off turnovers. They're first in the ACC. Ten touchdowns, two field goals, and they have a chance to tack six more on here. They're at the 32 of Georgia Tech. Hand off Houston. And the Tar Heels are picking up yards wholesale now to the 21. A gain of 11 by Ryan Houston. Cedric Griffin makes the tackle. And he's showing off now. The Tar Heels flexing their muscles, trying to put this one out of reach. You gotta sense it. You have to have killer instinct. Great down block. I mean, look at the area right here you can run through. They may not be able to put the two of us through that hole. <laughs> hey, that had to be a real big hole. I'm telling you, you might get through. I'm going to have a problem. First and ten. Hand off goes to Houston. Strong game for Ryan Houston. He's already scored once. He takes it down to the 17-yard line. Houston with seven career touchdowns, six this season. Big young man out of Matthews, North Carolina. Bedroom community to Charlotte. He's a sophomore. Played at Butler High School, which was the chief rival of Independence High School. Second down at seven. Our first and ten line is brought to you by SeatExchange.com. It's the official ticket exchange partner of the ACC. Rome and Houston are set back behind Cam Sexton. Here's Houston following Rome's block. Heads to the 10, reverses field, and Morgan catches up with him and brings him down at the five-yard line. A 13-yard gain for the Tar Heels' Ryan Houston. Well, get your leash out. Time to go walk the dog. Watch the big battle. Darden, he comes over again. Then you get the cut inside. Watch it out here. So you got three in a row. Put the diamond leash on the puppy and take him out for a good long walk. Watch this. This is man on man, pad on pad, player down, back with a cut, textbook running game. And more of the same as Houston gets down inside the three to the two-yard line. Bad one of the piling off penalty. It's a three-yard game, and it brings up second down and goal. There's no substitute for it. When you can control a man up front with sheer power, it's like you look at Virginia Tech. When a man rushes for 250-some yards on you, he owns you. We're talking about Darren Evans. Had a great night against Maryland on Thursday. And off Houston again. Headed for the end zone. Touchdown, North Carolina. But give me this, right in your face, come at you, I'm going to take it.
football. Carolina, you better if they got if they're on your schedule, you better buckle up. Well, Maryland's doing just that right now. They got them next week. Casey Barr's on for the point after. And it's through. 21-0. The Tar Heels now with 83 points off turnovers. 21 of them coming today. Or sub-14 coming today, actually. Ryan Houston's second touchdown of the second half. North Carolina by three scores. 3-3. Three, three, or visit alltelfootball.com. A short kick by Jay Wooten. And it falls. Fair catch at the 26-yard line for Georgia Tech. Well, we start every game with a little rascal Flats who opened the telecast with their hit. Bob that hair from the album still feels good. The guys just finished up their latest tour this past weekend. They played in front of more than 1.2 million fans in 2008. Get all your news on the group at www.rascalflats.com. And good luck to the guys next Wednesday. Country Music Awards are looking for a sixth straight vocal group of the year award. Rascal Flats, proud to have them start us off with high noon in the ACC. First and ten. Pitch comes on the end around to Thomas. Wide open field. Thomas, first down and more, and brought down with a flag thrown into the fray at the 42-yard line. He's down at the 45 by Kendrick Bernie. Yeah, great call. Nick Claytor came out through a perfect no-hitter. Oh, that thing might have gone to the rail. Holding, holding 15 on the offense. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Correction. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still first down. So they go backwards. There you see Thomas, great athlete. See the claw pull right there. That's a no-no. We had a perfect, we had a, no, a whiff block inside by Claytor, or that may have scored. Good call. Brings up first and four. What a strange situation. They gave him the 15 yards, then they knocked it back. Josh Nesbitt back at the controls. Stands in, fires, has a man out there. Incomplete intended for Demarius Thomas. Well, turnovers has resulted in scores. North Carolina has been very opportunistic. Roddy Jones puts this punt on the ground after Georgia Tech had stuffed it. Three plays later, Ryan Tom, Ryan Houston goes in. This fumble by Jabo Shaw picked up by the Tar Heels at the 32. And five plays later, five straight carries by Ryan Houston. His second touchdown in as many series. And the seventh of his career. See, the time to talk is over. Either you're going to be a beast in November and try to get to Tampa, or you're all hot air. Nesbitt pitched to Lucas Cox, turns the corner, gets the first down, and pushes the ball out to the 40-yard line. Mark Paschal with the tackle, nine-yard gain. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hawkwood. Well, Josh Nesbitt is visibly limping out there. He's been in pain on the sidelines, but you, you got to believe that Georgia Tech down three touchdowns got to go upstairs, and it's Nesbitt who has the arm among the quarterbacks for Georgia Tech. Well, don't sell this team short in terms of being able to strike quick. Georgia Tech has 17 touchdown drives of three minutes or less. Oh, yeah. They're going to need three in 9.55. Need to get one in a hurry. Yeah. Calvin Booker over there can also throw it for the Yellow Jackets. That's true. And this one went off the arm of Nesbitt. Yeah, he's hurt. Now. He's hurt. Yeah, he is. There ain't no way you're going to be less than 100% against this defense. You're going to get yourself hurt. Yeah, not the way they're playing. No, not today. Second down and 10. And uh, Georgia Tech played with a lot of problems. They got woes along that offensive line. They're not very deep in talent right now in the transition year to Paul Johnson's offense and his program. He only has 72 scholarship players out of a possible 85. Second down and 10. Nesbitt hands off. Wire. Picks it up and goes ahead to the 43-yard line. Gain of about three. Patrick Powell in on the tackle. He's a redshirt freshman from the Husky County, North Carolina. Uh, Butch, Butch Davis did a great job of getting this group to understand how dangerous Georgia Tech is. Yeah. And th this team played, this is the best I've seen them play. They played with more attitude today. There was a nastiness about Carolina. I mean, I haven't seen a play like this. This is, this is frightening. Now they've done it on the ground, surprisingly enough. To throw, Nesbitt, too high. 
for Demarius Thomas. Yeah, he was there. He had the yard marker too. You know, when we when we talked about North Carolina at the outset needing the time to throw. Yeah. Well, they've been able to clear paths out for their yeah, offensive ground game. And Ryan Houston, Sean Drone have done a great job. Drones up to 90 yards. Houston 63. That's a career high. Yeah. They run with the shoulder square. See, I'm a little fed up with all these four two backs. They can't get you a yard. All you hear about how fast they run to 40. Well, this ain't track and field. This is football. You need somebody that can get between the hash mark and be productive. Here comes the punt for Blair on fourth down. And he shanks it out of bounds. Well outside the 20. And they're going to mark it down where? At the 28-yard line. It's a 29-yard kick, no return, and the Tar Heels will be outside the 20-yard line to start. Our Chevrolet Stars of the Week in conference play, offensive back of the week, C.J. Spiller against Boston College, 242 all-purpose yards. Clemson on the way back, 27-21 over Boston College, and we'll see him next week at Duke. Well, speaking of time, they have two guys who are fast but will run between the tackle hard. And a defensive lineman of the week in this game, Michael Johnson. Defensive end from Georgia Tech against Florida State had a sack and forced a fumble, which led to a score, and Georgia Tech needed it 31 28 over Florida State. First and 10, and around handoff, Cooter Arnold. And Arnold's first carry of the day gets him out to the first down marker at the 40 yard line. Wow, what a play by Jared Riddle. Michael Johnson on the day has been a busy man. They've run right at him today. And that's what Butch Davis wanted his team to do. Run right at some of these big guys. No sense running around him. you got to go through them, make them make plays. Well, Reynolds, Darty, Dyer, Tilmapila, Kajali, that offensive line, that's the key today. They have taken over the line of scrimmage. First and ten for North Carolina. Eight and a half left to go, and they've got a comfortable 21-0 lead, and they're going to take their sweet time here in the final eight and a half. And off goes to Houston. Turns the corner, and then the big back from Matthews. North Carolina is stopped after a three-yard game. Georgia Tech, Cedric Griffin, and Cooper Taylor in on the tackle. Well, you look ahead for the Tar Heels now as they close in on this thing. They've got Maryland at Maryland. They've got two of their next three on home at home, and they're not easy as you look at the accurate scoreboard. Most of the action early is in the Big Ten and the SEC. The ACC, this is the only game going on at this time. Kentucky with a field goal lead on yeah. Georgia. South Carolina leading Arkansas at the half. Wyoming still up on Tennessee. Of course, a coaching change coming in the offseason. And Auburn with a lead. Second down, seven. And a handoff goes to Houston. He's brought down. Forward progress marked out to the 44-yard line. It's, it's doable for North Carolina, but they've got to keep pace. They have a couple of games in hand in the conference race, one game in hand in particular on Virginia Tech. They have a win over Miami, which is significant to them in this race because Miami's among the leaders. That game with Maryland next week, not so much important from the division, but yeah. from the conference. Yeah, standard. conference. And it's going to be tough because if the Turpins aren't mad, then yeah, I just throw my hands up in there. I mean, well, you got to come out and, and, and you still got a chance to go to Tampa. Yes, you do. What more incentive do you need? Third and six, and Drone is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Clock continues to roll with six and a half left. I'll tell you what, you have 11 out of 12 teams in this conference that still have a shot at a bowl bit. It's, it's amazing what these conference teams have done so far this year. You have, I think, uh, seven or eight. We've got a graphic on bowl eligibility. And uh, some teams are already in, North Carolina being one of them. Here's, here's the graphic on bowl eligibility, who's in and who's on the verge. And you look, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Maryland, Miami, Virginia Tech. Now, Florida State's got six wins, but they have two wins over uh, football championship series teams. You get credit for one of them. So they need another win. That's why that Clemson game is big today for a variety of other reasons. And then, of course, Boston College, Wake Forest, Virginia knocking on the door. You can probably make a case for Duke and Clemson. 
as they are at four looking for six. Wouldn't that be something? That would be oh, that man. one of the stories of the year. Yeah, we'll see him next week. Yep, see him at Clemson, uh -huh. high noon. Big game for Clemson today, though. They've got to run the table to get back and stay in this race. Well, it's about November, and that's where Virginia Tech seems to be uh, a dominant program in November. It comes the kick by Brown, and it's a beauty. This backs up. The receiver back to the seven-yard line. He returns it. That's uh, Zach Andrew Smith. Both of these guys. 51-yard kick, a seven-yard return for Terrence Brown. Georgia Tech takes over the football after this timeout. Down 21-0 with 6.21 to play. ACC football brought to you in part by Chevrolet. First and 10, Georgia Tech from their own 15-yard line. They're down three scores, and they can't afford to punt anymore. Nesbitt back to throw off play action. Great pressure on, and a flag thrown in. A definite blatant hold by Joseph Gilbert on a defensive unit now that two weeks ago, when we talked to Everett Withers, their defensive coordinator, he said, you know something? We don't get enough pressure from our front four. Well, today that's changed. <laughs> Tell you what, it, it, it has changed because Cam Thomas just decided that number 70 on the offense. That penalty will be declined. Second down. So second down. That time McAdoo in on him. Yeah, and, now, and then they throw McAdoo at you. I mean, you're adding people <laughs> that can get to the quarterback. <laughs> I mean, this is my first look at McAdoo. Quinn, Wilson, Marvin Austin, Mullins gave him quality time, Thomas. And that's without having to send their backers. You saw T.J. Yates warming up on the sidelines for North Carolina. Second down and 10. Handoff goes first back. That's Dwyer, and Dwyer's on his horse. Has Goddard beat. Headed down the sideline. This is what Georgia Tech needs. Can he score? Touchdown! He got, look how he got in the ball. Got yep. Good call, Steve. He hit the pylon with it. Carter chased him downfield. Goddard couldn't catch him. 85 yards. He had an 88-yarder against Mississippi yeah, State. We saw that. One play changes the direction of the game, and Georgia Tech's on the board. And just ruins all your defensive stats. He went from a banner day, now, boom, this is ordinary. Couldn't finish it. Now, this is what they've been waiting for all game. This is a premium baller. It's to, to the end zone. Wire. Big boy can run. That's his eighth touchdown run of the season. He's got 18 career touchdowns, 17 of them on the ground. Blair for the point after. Kick is up, and it is good. Well, they missed two field goals. They have squandered some field position. They've turned the ball over and really was still in. Now, that was a good Earl's good block on that. He had a couple of penalties, but that time he chipped in as 230 pounds rumbling down the sideline for a score. And that 85-yard touchdown run gives him 155 on the day and 21 carries, and it lifts him over 1,000 yards for the season. Now, what are they fighting for? Georgia Tech. If they can come back and go 5-2, it would give them a commanding position. And they need it over Virginia Tech because Virginia Tech has wins over both Georgia Tech and North Carolina. If the Tar Heels win, they would go to 3-2, and two, and they stay into the thick of things. The team you got to keep a mind on is Miami. They play Virginia Tech Thursday night in Miami. That is a huge game. And, and then there's Virginia this afternoon getting ready to kick off in about 45 minutes yeah. at Wake Forest. So lots of things going on in this conference. And you can talk about Duke. They're playing NC State today. Everybody's in it. I mean, they really are. You just have to perform. 21-7. I don't recall it ever being this close from a conference standpoint. You want to have 11 teams in the running for your championship game. Imagine those folks. It's an onside kick, and it's recovered by North Carolina. Now, Paul Johnson had to pull that out of his head. He had no choice. Playmaker. The clock is working against him at 5.57 left to go. And they try to do it, and Hakeem Nix, who's caught a pass today, they fall with a smile say, hey, look, i got to try. Yeah, I didn't get my Nix fixed today. Nope. Oh, nice hand. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's, that's why I like watching it work. And that run by Dwyer, by the way, has been called now a 
officially an 85-yard run, the longest run from scrimmage against North Carolina in their football history. Wow. It just kills your stats, man. That was a great defensive day. Here's Houston popping outside and carrying Brad Jefferson along with him. As we approach the top of the hour, this is Georgia Tech in North Carolina from Raycom Sports. Steve Martin along with Rick Doc Walker and Mike Hogwood. This broadcast a copyright presentation of Raycom Sports and any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Raycom Sports is prohibited. We are second down here for the Tar Heels after the recovery of the onside kick. They're in Georgia Tech territory, and they are there for the third straight series. Cam Sexton still out there. Hand off Houston. As the dance outside, comes back inside and says, Hi, how you doing? To Derek Morgan. And Mike Hogwood standing on the sidelines. Let's go to him right now. Thank you, Steve. You saw T.J. Yates warming up a moment ago. Cam Sexton had already put the headphones on. He was going to be signaling in place. But after that run by Dwyer, Butch Davis said, hey, Cam, you're still in there. And uh, get a little serious here. He said, let's grind it out. I heard him say, let's grind it out here for this last couple of minutes. And with these clock rules, you can really start running some time. Well, the clock continues to move until the two-minute mark. It's at 4.37 now. We're looking at a third down and three. And you can bet the Tar Heels are not going to be in a hurry. There's Butch Davis beside him. Running backs coach Ken Browning. He's been a part of every staff since Matt Brown. And Yates walks away. There's not enough. Yates walks away, looking at the sideline, and more than Sexton walks away, and then it looks like, let's see that play again if we can. Yeah, nice move. He gave it back to the little wrinkle. Make you think, going direct snap, little wildcat action. Yeah. And he went, it went to drone. Yeah, they even fold the guard. They yep. fold the guard under. Sexton tries to sell it. Yeah. And now it's going to be fourth down. Timeout on the field. Taken by Georgia Tech. Now coming up next week, ACC football comes your way from Jeff Valley. The Duke Blue Devils, a surprise team this season under David, David Cutcliffe. They've had some big wins. The Clemson Tigers trying to reclaim their season. Dave O'Swinney, their new head coach, seeking to change interim to permanent. Duke and Clemson. And, of course, if Clemson wins today at Florida State, then that game becomes even bigger because Clemson, remember, nothing's changed about C.J. Spiller and no, no. James Davis and those guys. They still got some of the best offensive talent in the league. They get it together. Could be something. Fourth down and one. Nick's in motion. Wilson back in there. Rolling the throw. Here is Nix. Touchdown! Hakeem Nix, 31 yards. Cam Sexton puts the hammer down. Well, that's the way you finish. Some of you may be wondering, how does he get open? Well, that's why he's Hakeem Nix. Great play action. Love the motion. Breaks out. You hope that was just a blown assignment playmaker because that's the last guy I'd leave open. I want to leave open. Casey Barth on for the point after. Kick is up, and for the fourth time today, it is good. And the Tar Heels roll ahead. 28-7. Let's watch it again. Well-designed play. Fullback guard out front, personal protectors. Wide open. Hakeem Nix moves into second for touchdowns in the season behind Marcus Wall. He has eight. Marcus Wall with nine. His second reception of the day. There's certain guys that don't let you down. Haywood Bay. I know I'm going to get some excitement. Jacoby Ford. I just know I'm going to get excitement. They are guaranteed playmakers. And it's just good to watch the game. Covington. Uh, with UVA now, Ogletree, they make plays. Now look at the AP Top 25. ACC making its presence felt. North Carolina looking to grow from 19 and maybe up as far as 15. Georgia Tech will probably tumble a bit. So will Maryland. 
Florida State status is in flux, depending on what they do with Clemson this afternoon. It's all out there for the ACC. All season long, we're following the road to Tampa Bay and the ACC football championship in Tampa on December 6th. Georgia Tech and North Carolina came into this game as the highest nationally ranked ACC teams and tied in the loss column. And the winner will be a favorite to be in Tampa on ACC Championship Saturday, provided somebody can knock off Virginia Tech along the way. Because both of these teams, as good as they are, have lost to Virginia Tech. Yeah, well, don't. Well, you know, that's why next Thursday night, Hurricane, the baby Hurricane. The baby cane. Tell you what, boy, they're jumping out of the crib now. They're going to get their own bottle out of the refrigerator. <laughs> they don't even need you to bring it to them anymore. That's the brown bottle now. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the kick that drives Marcus Wright to the lip of the end zone. And he kind of hides behind blockers and looks to make a move and gets out to the 22-yard line. 22-yard return. Tackle made by Jonathan Smith of North Carolina. Close captioning for today's telecast provided by Bojangles. You've got to want to need to get a have of Bojangles. Why are they against some dirty rice? Miami, their running game. Again, they can run it. They can. They, they can run. They have two different versions of offense. That no huddle. Where they're doing the smoke and mirrors, and then they settle down and start pounding you. They got two guys that can get it done. And they got two quarterbacks that uh, have a pretty really good spine to yeah. both of them. First and ten. Rolling out. Here comes Nesbitt. The pass incomplete. He's pushed there by Robert Quinn. Yeah, he's struggling physically. Yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, right. It may look worse than it is, but this is just not the opponent to play hurt with. So just accurate scoreboard. Oh, look at that. At the end of three, Georgia leading Kentucky. Now that's how the seesaw. Ohio State a winner today. Tennessee's on the board. Auburn tied up with Tennessee Martin. Boise State, ninth ranked in the country in the league. And three ACC teams getting underway. Four ACC games getting underway here. Nesbitt, blind pass, somebody catch it. That somebody is a car here. Tremaine Goddard for the sixth interception of the season. And the 11th of his career. Stays in bounds long enough to run just a little more clock down. It's the third Georgia Tech turnover of the day, and it puts the cap on what is going to turn into a great day here for the Tar Heels. Yeah, and they're a good football team. Georgia Tech is a very good team, and it's, it's a score not indicative of their defense. Their offense just didn't get it done. And playing hard, playing hurt, you see the guts. Oh, what a block. Yeah. You're getting started getting your people picked off now. That's, uh, you don't want that. Now interceptions for the North Carolina defense. Leading the country with 17 interceptions. Now 18. Eight different players have interceptions. Jermaine Goddard, five this season. There's Juan Sturdivant scoring. And Goddard scored against Boston College. Pass is complete, and this is Hakeem Nix for more yardage. And with those yards, he becomes the all-time leading receiver in career reception yards in North Carolina history. Passing Corey Holiday at 24-47. He has 26 on that. Doesn't take long. Gage comes right out, hits the playmaker. Nice move. Knows where to go. It's all about the end zone for number 88, Hakeem Nix. And that's T.J. Yates. Yeah. Back from the injury, getting some valuable experience as North Carolina builds some depth in that quarterback position for the stretch run in November. They have Maryland, NC State, and Duke remaining. It's all out there for the Tar Heels to claim a spot to go to Tampa. Fumble on the play, picking it up as Yates. Clock still continues to roll. It will continue to roll until we get to the two-minute mark, and then there'll be a stoppage of play when the ball becomes dead. And that's why. started on the snap. Steve, that's why he needs to be in there. We yeah. can't take anything for granted. No. Especially the exchange. Got to be in. Got to let these linemen get used to his voice again. 
because as you say, it's going to be thick. It's going to be thick in College Park. Oh, boy. I mean, real thick. Well, we've seen Maryland respond before. They lost 31 nothing to Virginia, then came back and beat Wake Forest 26 nothing. Yep. Yates hands off inside Johnny White. And he just pushes the pile here. We've got 2.22 left. And let's go to the sidelines again. And on Mike Hogwood. Steve, on Friday night, every coach tries to come up with some something to motivate their team. The North Carolina team watched a video last night when they were at their hotel. And the theme of it was control your own destiny or someone else will. Well, they've controlled their destiny today. I think the theme uh, from Butch Davis worked pretty good. As much as they can, Mike, really. Look at it third down here. At the 23, up 28 to 7. They've got a win in their pocket here. They just got to have to manage the end of this game, get themselves to the locker room, and start preparing for the Terrapins. Yates back to throw. Pass intended. And that's going to be Dwight Jones. Jones is a freshman from Burlington, North Carolina. Played his high school ball at Cummings High School. A school that has produced quite a few North Carolina players. Well, they came in, they were clearly rested. Star Hill crew, group was rested. Yep. Focused. Uh, Turpins have a couple of days to catch up and to heal. They ought to be angry as a, as a mountain lion. And you're at their place. So it's, and then not to mention NC State, that rivalry in Duke this year. So exactly. it's going to be tough. It's not an easy it's road. Tough. It's not an easy road. Here is Yates looking for the corner route. Incomplete intended for Anthony Parker Boyd. We have a flag down. It's at the line of scrimmage and it's against the Tar Heels. Stops the clock with a minute 34 left to go. First down. So on fourth down, they throw. They don't get it. Give it up on downs. And Georgia Tech takes over. Again, trying to get the quarterback in the flow of things. And then, of course, you got to earn those holes. Devin Anderson. Tar Heels now will be 3-2 and two in about a minute and 34 seconds. In the ACC race, it's 7-2 and two overall. Straight ahead, not much happening there for Georgia Tech, and there probably won't be for the rest of the day, although they will take a timeout. Georgia Tech will take their final timeout with a minute 25 left to go. Next Saturday, we take you to Death Valley, the Duke Blue Devils. We've been frustrated over the last couple of years having themselves a nice season with four wins. Can they get themselves bowl eligible? You bet they can. The Clemson Tigers looking for a restart. Have to run the table. There are no excuses for Clemson right now. They must play well this week, and then they must play well next week against Duke. We'll have it for you right here, beginning at 12 noon. And on many of these same stations at 11:30, ACC football today. The team next announced to the crowd now 2,472 career yards, an all-time North Carolina record. Eclipsing Corey Holiday, who's still part of the football administration here. We're at 24-47. It looked like it was going to be a slow day for Knicks. Georgia Tech pretty much had him solved after flirting with uh, Greg Carr last week. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they'd seen enough of big receivers, but then he shook it loose later. Yeah, he's been fun. Uh, he's definitely made my job a lot more fun. Cam Sexton's had a solid day for the Tar Heels. Second down now and about eight. Pass to the fats to Corey Earls complete. He'll get a first down and knocked out of bounds to stop the clock with a minute 18. Zach Brown, backup linebacker, as North Carolina goes to the twos and the threes on their depth chart as we see this end coming here in Chapel Hill. And Paul Johnson may look at this and say, hey, we're a couple turnovers. We're breaking in new people. We've got the Canes and the Dogs coming up. And he's still, you know, can can accomplish a lot of really good things for the Yellow Jackets. An off week and then a Thursday out in with the Hurricanes. So they play again on November 20th. And as a prelude to Thanksgiving week, on a Thursday night, six yard game, Corey Earls. Georgia Tech has no more timeouts. Clock continues to move with under a minute to play. This will be the first win for North Carolina where they have never trailed. 
this season. Nesbitt rolls left. Pass is complete. It's out there to Roddy Jones at the 46 of North Carolina. He gets out of bounds and stops the clock with 42 seconds left. A 10-yard reception. So Miami holds the key in many ways to this race. They have games remaining with Georgia Tech and with Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. And both are Thursday encounters. So the next two Thursdays will be telling us to which one of those two teams remains in this race. And then Virginia Tech has the advantage, I think, because two out of their remaining three are at home. They played a lot on neutral fields and away from home. Away, yeah, away from home. The first seven games. Flag on the play. Nesbitt guns. Pass complete to Corey Earls. But let's see what the flag is going to be. Could be a hold. It's in that area. There's another flag, however, on the sideline. Just think where UVA was two weeks ago. Well, yeah. Positioned to walk. Yeah, they right to the All right. Well, you're right. Ready to walk all the way to Blacksburg to finish the season. Went into Atlanta. You know, nine point dogs going to steal it. Come home. So that's how it's going to go. And they're going to end up in Blacksburg. That's going to be worth the price of admission. Oh, that's going to be a great Cavaliers and Hokies. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And here comes a handoff. Goes to Lucas Cox. Now about 27 seconds left to go. Georgia Tech cannot stop the clock with a timeout. It'll continue to roll. And they're going to try to get one more playoff. Maybe get themselves a little bit closer on the scoreboard. If they catch the Tar Heel sleeping. But... This hasn't been a day where North Carolina's defense has slept much. Carolina. Nesbitt's a throw. Pass complete. Getting out of bounds is Roddy Jones at the 30. Stops the clock with six seconds left to go. To Roddy Jones, number 20. Butch Davis looking on. Wants. This is a good test for the twos and threes on this defensive depth chart. Oh, yeah. And all the work those kids had to put in. You mentioned the scout team and getting their look ready. It's tough to play Georgia Tech, even with the extended time. But I think the extended time really helped Carolina. Well, as Mike Hogwood reported, Butch Davis wouldn't let the scout team have the ball yeah. until three days ago. There's a pass by Nesbitt. He's hit as he threw. And the clock runs out on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And the bell tolls strong once again for the Tar Heels, who push their incredible season to 7-2. and two. North Carolina with a win here this afternoon stays very much in this Coastal Division race. They are 3-2, and two, and they have three chances to increase that total and become 6-2. and two. For Georgia Tech now, they are 4-3 and three and have only one conference game remaining. And then that is with Miami on the 20th of November, and then they finish the season out of conference, but a game that is very important to their program against Georgia. North Carolina has Maryland, NC State, and Duke remaining, and our Mike Hogwood is standing by with victorious North Carolina coach Butch Davis. Well, Butch, your team uh, today, I don't know if they play better this season. Boy, they looked awfully good. Well, our, our coaches did a great job getting these kids ready the last two weeks, and it, it obviously against this offense, it's a huge advantage to have a little bit of extra time. I mean, in two and a half days, I don't know if we could have had the same performance, but our kids played hard, and they, they did what we asked them to do. Offensively, I know you had two great running backs in Houston and Sean, but that line looked like they were giving them a lot of room to run there, too. Well, I mean, we're, we're proud of the, of the growth of our offensive line. Sam Pittman's done a great job with these guys, and collectively, they get better every single week, and so, you know, the running game against Georgia Tech is so important because you need time of possession, you need some first downs. Now, in this part of the season, every win makes the next game that much bigger. So much to play for now for this team. Well, you know, I mean, we're going to stay doing what we've been doing. I mean, it's one game at a time. Maryland uh, is having a great year themselves and so we just got to do everything we can to get ready coach good luck against maryland thank you very All much right. that's butch davis we've got some other players over here he's congratulating and hugging hakeem nicks we're going to try to get in here get a word with him hakeem your day didn't start out 
so fast. His team was running the ball. You didn't get a lot of touches, but talk about setting that record and what it means to you. I mean, it's a great accomplishment for me. You know, there ain't no other way to do it than in front of my home crowd. And, uh, you know, I got the record late in the game, but uh, it's set now, and I'm proud of it. What about this team? What's the attitude and move of this team heading down the stretch of this ACC season? You know, the attitude is definitely on the uprise. We got to keep thinking positive, take it one week at a time, and uh, just learn from our mistakes. And it doesn't matter to you when the running game's going good. You'll stay over there and block a little bit. Yeah, I, I definitely will. That doesn't matter to me. All right, Hakeem, great game. We've got Cam Sexton over here, leader of this offense. Cam, another win for you as the starting quarterback of this team. Talk about this offense today and the offensive performance. You know, I think we ran the ball extremely well. And up front, we were just dominant. You know, I think uh, they gave us a lot of matchup problems. I mean, I, I really believe that's the best pass rush we've seen in a while. That makes your job a lot easier when you got a running game like that. Oh, it's very easy. I got Sean and then Ryan Houston just comes in and gets the He was a bull. He was a bull. He's always a bull. Yeah. You know, taking over this team, I saw you and TJ talking some. There doesn't seem to be any real rivalry between the two of you. He's back. It's great to know you got two healthy quarterbacks. Yeah, it's great. Me and TJ have been the best of friends. We'll continue to support each other. He's been great with me. I know I've been great with him, and it will, it will never be a problem here. What about this team now as you fight for a championship? You've got two losses, but you've got another win. That makes every game down the road that much bigger. Yeah, I think that's us. We fight, and, you know, we're not ever going to give up, and we're going to stay after them, and we're going to come after people. And, you know, here we go. We're in a good position now. we got to go out and get ready for Maryland. Final question. The ups and downs in your career. You've been on the bench. You've been number three. Now you're the leader of this team. What does it mean to you personally? It means everything because my teammates and my coaches, my family and my friends have always been behind me, and now that they get a little bit of this to share with me is great and I couldn't be more excited. We'll let you head to the locker room celebrate a little bit. That's Cam Sexton. Steve, some happy Tar Heels here and uh, certainly uh, they made a big statement I think today with this win. Well earned victory that means a lot to them as they stay in the chase on the road to Tampa and they stay in pace in the Coastal Division with a 28-7, a solid victory over Georgia Tech. Back with more from Keenan Stadium after this.